I graduated from law school with over $200,000 of student debt. And a year ago today, I finished paying off all $225,526.77. It's funny when I think about it, I spent so many years of my life and got into over $200,000 of debt to get one piece of paper, my diploma, and then I worked really hard for the next two years to get another piece of paper saying that I paid off all of my student loans. Congratulations, your loan is paid in full. I wanted to make this video for anyone who has student loans or debt of any kind to take you through how I went about paying off my student loans and I hope that you'll find something useful from this video. The first thing I can say is to face it head on. I think a lot of times we tend to push away or ignore the things that scare us and for me that was student loans. To be honest, when I was taking them out, I thought of it kind of just as monopoly money and it seemed like something I needed to do to get to my dream of becoming a lawyer. Even at graduation, the gravity of it hadn't hit me. And I'm embarrassed to say I just didn't really put much thought into taking out $200,000 of student loans. I just kept ignoring it. Blissful ignorance. And I remember when it hit me, I had just finished taking the California bar and was about to start my job at a law firm. And I received this letter in the mail about my student loans. Something about how the grace period had ended and there were words like forbearance in there too. And I realized I didn't know what any of those words meant. I didn't know what a grace period was or what forbearance was. And that kind of scared me. I realized that I had so many thousands of dollars in student loans, but didn't really know what was going on and didn't know what any of these terms meant. That was my big reality check. So that's what got me started. I learned as much as I possibly could about student loans and really had this moment where I decided that I was going to be in charge of my student loans and run them, not let them run me. And that was kind of a defining moment for me because I'm pretty sure if I hadn't had that reality check where I decided to face them, I'd still be just blindly making minimum payments each month for who knows how long. So that's why my first tip is just to face it. I know it's scary and much easier to just kind of ignore them and do the bare minimum for your student loans, but facing it was the one thing that I did that allowed me to pay them off in two years. Once I decided I was ready to face it, the second thing that I did was to list out all of my loans. I used a simple Excel sheet and just listed out the amount of each loan, the interest rate, and the type of loan it was. This allowed me to just get a clear bird's eye view of what exactly was going on with my loans. So if I needed to, I could quickly refer to that Excel sheet to figure out the average interest rate across all of my loans or which loan had the highest interest rate, or which loan had the largest amount. I think this was a really good exercise, if anything, to just figure out what was going on with them. The third thing I'll say is that you have to set goals. I believe this applies to anything in personal finance, but especially when it comes to paying off debt. If you're just aimlessly chipping away at your student loans with no goal in mind, it's going to take you a long time. Paying off all of my student loans in two years wasn't just a coincidence. It was a goal that I had mapped out from the beginning. And I knew that as long as I stayed on track with that goal, I would be able to pay off all of my loans in two years. So it was really motivating to kind of be able to envision that finish line and see myself at that two year mark being debt free. I of course broke that into mini goals of how much I'd have to pay off each month in order to stay on track to meet that long-term two-year goal. If you can, tie your payoff goal to another significant date, like your birthday or a holiday or an anniversary. My two-year goal was two years from the date I started working at the law firm. And for me, this was quite memorable and helped me to stay on track to meet that goal. Something I did that I think everyone should do is once you set your payoff goal date, tell someone. Whether it's telling me in the comments below or telling your best friend or your mom, I think it's really important to tell someone else so that you have that sense of accountability. Another reason I think this step three is important is because in order to set a long-term goal, it requires you to take a look at your current financial picture and figure out how much monthly income you have coming in 
and what your expenses are so that you can accurately determine how much you could put towards paying off your student loans each month. At least for me, the whole process of setting a long-term goal and then breaking that down into monthly goals kind of gamified the process for me and made it fun for me to make sure I was hitting that target each month. The fourth thing that I did to pay off my student loans was to resist lifestyle inflation. Lifestyle inflation is basically increasing your spending as your income increases. I wanted to include this because I think if anything, this was my secret to paying off the student loans. I went from working minimum wage jobs before I graduated to suddenly making six figures as a corporate lawyer at this big fancy law firm. It was a huge jump in income and it would have been so easy for me to fall into the trap of lifestyle inflation, of treating myself to nicer things, of taking Ubers to work, of eating out at lunch instead of packing my lunch, of getting my nails done, of replacing my Craigslist furniture with new furniture. But I actually knew that the dangerous part of lifestyle inflation is that anyone can inflate their lifestyle, but it's very hard to come back down. So once you've inflated your lifestyle and you're eating out for lunch every single day, it's very difficult to come back down to this place where you're packing your lunch every day. So I just didn't want to fall into that trap. My secret was to never allow myself to think that I wasn't still a broke student. If you can stick with that broke student mentality, I promise that you're going to be able to pay off your loans so much quicker. So just always keep the goal in mind, that piece of paper that's going to tell you that you are debt free. I chose these four steps because I believe that they're applicable to everyone, regardless of your income level or the repayment plan that you're on. The basics of student loans comes down to this. If you want to pay off more student loans, you either need to make more money or save more money. I'll do future videos on topics about this and also on student loan specific topics like whether refinancing your loans makes sense and whether you should use extra money to pay off your student loans or invest. So if you're interested in this kind of content, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. Learning about personal finance really changed my life. It allowed me to increase my income, to pay off my student loans, to create passive income streams to save thousands of dollars on travel. And I'm so passionate about personal finance because of this, which is why I've created this channel to share with you everything that I've learned every Tuesday. If you have any questions about student loans, my name is Erica, it's nice to meet you, and let's chat in the comments below. If you haven't already, you can also watch these two videos. Thank you for watching and have a great week.